general for master classes, it's very difficult for conductors to get um, practice with their instrument because there aren't a lot of 90-person orchestras in practice rooms. So it's, um, it's important to be able to work with players who know this music. Um, just for our, our physical technicality. For, yeah. Conducting can be a very lonely task, you know, you spend hours with the score and then you have to immediately for a concert go into a rehearsal situation. And these master classes give a nice bridging point, you know, so it's, it's not a concert and it's not score study but it's somewhere in between. So it, it allows you to have this development that otherwise you wouldn't have. And it's obviously supervised by fantastic people like Pierre Boulez. And um, so it's, it's really constructive and I think crucial really for a developing conductor to do these things. No, you know, you don't, you, you don't let the sound expand. If you have uh, figure six, look, look, figure six. And one. And uh, I do that longer. And that, and then now, one, one, and so on. Okay. Uh, yeah. I think, especially with this it's work, Eclat, um, written by Boulez, it's, it's very interesting because a lot of it is this fixed improvisation which the conductor cues. And so while the score is incredibly informative, of course the score cannot give everything. So to learn from the person who wrote the score, you then almost have the, the Ausgabe, you know, the, the Urtext edition. It's, it's, it's really fantastic. And then you can add to the score you already have. And so you're taking away almost an improved version of what you started with. And you know it's, you know it's right and you know your thoughts are right because Boulas has said, you know, you must do this with the left hand, then you must wait here. This is the most important bit in this bar. But because there's this freedom in the piece, um, when you first look at the score, there are thousands of questions that arise. And so it's so nice to be able to come here and work on the piece and suddenly Boulez can say, yes, no, yes, no, this is wrong, this is right, this is wrong. You know, and so suddenly everything becomes a lot clearer and you don't have to sit there thinking, oh, should I wait a bit longer here? Can I be this free here? Because you now know, you know, he has said and he really knows what he wants and he tells you, which is great. So it's, it's a really exciting experience from that perspective. Yes, you do, you know, ta -tam. then not, a very, very small gesture, a small gesture, but you did the crescendo in the same time, and then ta ka dam ta ka da ka mm -hmm. you know. Really more, more brusque, I was going to say. Ah, okay. Sudden, the gesture also. They are, they are, they are trailing very, very hard, and then you cut them off. You know. Uh huh. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Okay. So is it from three or four? Yeah, on a, on a f uh, three and then four one. Right. And then after that, you do very gently on this one. Uh, it, it makes the diminishing and tuck. Should I start at four? Uh, start at four, yes. It's four? Yeah, yeah. L look, Yatam. Two. I don't make very much. I simply show the crescendo and tell it the, 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 the crescendo <laughs> movements ra, uh, rather slow. And then when you decide, you do it. Okay. Okay? More, more uh, you know, uh, junction between the slow movements and the quick movements. Uh -huh. That yep. you don't think, oh, I have forgotten, tuck, tuck. Uh, right. Yep. Uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah. You know? Okay. Uh, okay, four. Continuously, you know, tampon, two, three, that they know they have to, to, to make the crescendo like that. Oh, yeah, right. You okay. know, yeah. because you do yeah. two, 
So you stay there, you stay yeah, there. Yeah, they can't paste the question. Yes. Yeah, okay. uh, four. <laughs> You know, Boulez has this body of repertoire that is put together in such a way that it's particular to his style of conducting. Uh, and he conducts it, and a few other people conduct it who I think know him personally, or at least very familiar with how he conducts. And so for us, uh, we get to experience that information firsthand in a way that most people can't, and so we're kind of part of this special legacy of this music. Um, because it's something that really needs to be explained verbally to some extent to be able to conduct successfully. No. Nope. Yeah, Sorry, yeah. excuse me, but he, <laughs> Sorry, I'm being he, was, he was too early. <laughs> If you if you want a chord not to be heard, you don't make a gesture, a big gesture. Okay. That's that's all mm -hmm. you need. <clears throat> no 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 no. What do you have to to have? You have the piano uh, to disappear. So you give a cue, a cue for the piano to disappear uh, with the pedal, lifting the pedal. Okay. And then when the piano has disappeared, then you begin to, to the trill. And the trill, you have uh, a small crescendo for the flute, for the trumpet, and for the viola. Mm -hmm. And you do that, not, re not regular, regularly, but you do one, two, wait a little bit, three. Yeah. And then they will know. Okay. But I mean, you do just do wow. Wow, wow, but uh, precisely in that direction. Okay. I mean, certainly he doesn't miss a trick, you know. Even when he has his eyes closed, he knows what we're doing wrong. All the things you give with every hand, whether it's your left or your right, you know, he knows exactly what he would do, and he wants you to try and do what he would do so, he, so you can see where he is coming from. And he's great at really insisting on what he wants, but in a, in a really supportive and uh, developmental type of way. Um, so I think, no, I completely agree that it's this Although there are lots of people watching, which can sometimes be a bit strange, um, it seems for me a really personal experience, and it really seems like it's just me and him, and you know, it's almost like there's a coffee in front of us, you know, we're having a chat. But it's very serious, but it's it's really personal and really relaxed. And so I think he thinks the more relaxed it is, the more at ease we feel, and so the more the more we can get out of the masterclass. So it's it's a great learning experience, I think. No, no, that you said, don't say, you said divide only the first one. One, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five. Okay. Eight, directly? Yes, uh, also very strict rhythmically. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Yeah. And tuck, 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 tuck. Do this bar. Directly on Roman three, please. Yeah. Yeah, don't, don't rush. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. That's a, five, that's a five, eight, simply yeah. that, you know. One, Do that two, again. No, now you, 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 you don't confuse the hands. No. You know, you have the tuck, the both hands, because that's very strong and they play together. Then you do that, simply that, to mark the bar line. And, and after the trill, which begins, then after to do one Roman, and then ta ta ta, and then ta dam. You know that's simply that. Okay. 
Okay? Yeah. Very, very clear and simple. From nine, maybe? Mm -hmm. Now, very gently, to hear. Wait! Wait! Oh, you are too in a rush here, too much in a rush. We must finish at 4.30, but I mean, if we finish at 4.35, it will be the same. <laughs> yeah. So, take time, yeah. Okay. Tram, pram. Pram, pram. So, pram, 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 wait. Please, that's you. Now, yeah. 